All right, guys. Um, back out here, uh, doing a little more organization, kind of part two of the other video I did about um, organizing everything. Um, brought more totes. So, like I said last time, I want to get them under the bed here in the storage area. Um, I'm sure a lot of travel trailers, RVs, fifth wheels, maybe not fifth wheels so much. Um, leave a comment below if they have storage under the bed. I know our last trailer did. I think some I've seen. Um, uh, you know, RV lots have had it. I can't really remember. But I'm going to kind of take the same approach. You can see this has gotten a little messy. There's a the part we did last time. I need to bring the rest of the sewer hoses out. Still not a great spot for them there. But I'm um, working on that still. I think I can trim down on the amount of hoses is what I'm going to do because I'm just going to go with the new kind of more flexible hoses and either get rid of the rest. It's probably the best thing to do is get rid of them. Um, but you can see uh, I got uh, propane that needs to be in the other forward compartment there we worked on last time. Um, this box here, which are some reflectors I got. A while ago, I put the link down below. Um, so, I want to try and keep those semi handy. You know, God forbid if you need them, but they basically they're like uh, triangles. You fold them out. If you have to change a tire on the road, um, Pretty compact case there. Oh, yeah. Doesn't want to seem to clip. That's not good. So, set you down for a second. Okay, so got a few items out, but I think I'm going to go with. Um... Oh, wow, I see the power right there, so that's good. That worked out. Put that right in there. And that didn't work. So, that goes in there. Um, again, it's not super uh, easy to get in here, but it's okay. It's there. It's storage. I'm not complaining. Glad to have it. Um, wow, not really even sure what that's to. Some type of molding, obviously. Um, keep that in here. Um, so I have the reflectors and then a jack. It's actually a floor jack to jack things up. That's come in handy already. Had to lift the trailer, the, the tongue up once. Um, it was a muddy situation. That's one thing, you guys, if you're new, I assume most people are new watching these, you know, if you're advanced, please leave a comment, um, RV or whatnot. But, um, yeah, that can be a real issue as far as, um, lifting the tongue in mud. And, you know, again, we have the new uh buckets i call them that uh, help with that versus the lego looking yellow blocks uh, but we'll see as time goes on how good those are they've been so good so far um need to organize that bucket right here you can see it's got assortment of everything so might be able to make some more, more room. I'm trying to leave tools on this side. Um, just so they're semi-handy to the door. 
and kind of go from there. I'm going to shut you guys off for a minute and then I'll bring you back when uh, I got that sorted through and, and hopefully another bucket in here if I can fit it. Talk to you in a minute. All right, guys, so this is what I came up with. Um, this got the emergency food kind of separated from everything else. And then I got the tools with the tools. And then I have extra propane right there. And a paper towel, you know. So it's definitely better it was. Gave me um, probably double of the little bit of storage I had. So I can kind of continue on from here. Um, again, limited storage and trying to make it work. And maybe maybe yours is different. Maybe you, I hear fifth wheels have a lot underneath. I've seen them in some RV lots. They do look like there's quite a bit of storage underneath, which must be really nice. I'm sure you, I think a lot of people do use totes for their organization. Uh, these type of other bins here. They're fairly inexpensive at the dollar store, or you can catch them on sale, maybe at Target or possibly Amazon too. I never really look for totes on Amazon. Um, so I'm going to do a little more work in back. Of course, I forgot a few things again. I really need to make a better list. Kind of keep shooting from the hip and heading out to, to work on this, but um, be right back, guys. Okay, so this time, it went, I turned on the power, and it went right to an E02 error code. You can see that on the screen there. Now, I'm just wondering now if there's an order to turning the power on. and turn this off, which I don't think so. I think last time I turned it on up front, or turned... Turn it on out there and then turn this on. No error code. So let me head back out here, turn this off, and then try it. It did say 10.5 on the solar. It's not, the sun's not up fully up yet, but turn that off. That's the battery disconnect. And then let me go see what I can do here. Turn this on. Eleven point two went right to E zero one. Now, yep, there it goes. So, shut that off for now. More V fun guys. Um, look over here. See if there's anything else I can do while I'm here. Probably not. Uh, oh, I was going to look for the top to the... Um, last time I was out here, there was a top. You probably remember the um, coffee maker that took a biff. Um, And see if I can locate the top to it, and I'm not seeing it. So, great. Uh, really hoping it didn't get thrown away. We really got to get better at um, organizing things immediately after the trip. Um, so, it's kind of how it goes. I'm not seeing it. So, not sure what's up with the electrical. Still need to troubleshoot that, especially with a trip coming up. So, I need to probably get it. Either keep spending more time figuring it out or get it in the shop because I only have limited time. Talk to you guys in a minute. Well, it's probably not the best shot, but it um, seems how this channel is about truck and tow. I don't know if you can see those LEDs right there on the, they're the uh, bed, bed lights. 
Um, put those in a while ago. Um, it's been a great upgrade. Also did, I'll include a picture of it. Obviously, can't do it right now by myself here. Don't want to run myself over. <laughs> um, the reverse light. So, you know, in addition to the uh, LED um, low beams and daytime running, which are all one light, uh, these have been done too. I did these. These were actually the first upgrade. So I'll include a um, some pictures of it before and after type thing so you guys can see that too. Uh, yeah, it's it's been pretty good. It's at night especially, obviously. Um, backing up uh, it gives you a ton more light through especially the backup camera. And then uh, just getting stuff in and out of the bed. So I recommend it too. That one's the, uh, they're both pretty simple to do, especially that one right there. Uh, that tail light, that bed light. It's literally, I think, two screws and popping the bulbs out. So that's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you in a minute. Hey, guys. Just wanted to do this quick video on the NoCo Genius Boost. Um, picked this up not too long ago. Um, fortunately haven't had to use it yet, but it's ready if needed. Um, this kind of replaces the old jumper cables that most of us, uh, 50 plusers, uh, used for years. In the last couple years, these, these came about, um, and they're really great. They save a lot of space, um. They're probably safer overall and uh, super convenient uh, because it's more than just uh, a booster. It's got a light on it and USB charger. So it's kind of a safety device too in that regard. You could something you could throw in a, a bug out bag, uh, that type of thing. Um, anyhow, so this is the NOCO Genius Boost GB40 uh, for 12 volt. They may make one for different types of batteries, but basically turn it on here. Um, tells you how much charge you have. Obviously, if it's low, you would hook up the USB over here, standard USB for the car, uh, and charge it. Uh, that's Actually, there's two of them. One's, one's to charge and one's to, to get charged there. Um, actually pretty simple to use. Um, you just connect your clamps here to this side, Cl clamps right in on that side. Um, and once you, provided you don't have a yellow a error here, now if you hook, the old days you hook the clamps up, it was a bad thing backwards. I mean, if you hook them up, you know, red to black or something, uh, bad things happen. But this, if you do that, no worries. It'll give you an error right here and just let you know, hey, your, um, your batteries are reversed, essentially. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty handy, it's pretty safe. Um, you know, most people can obviously handle operating something like that even if maybe you've never jump started it comes with pretty clear instructions as well uh, matter of fact i'll link up the video down in this description uh, now you can do a manual override on these um, and that's right here and that that's where you would actually um, if there's there's safe certain safety mechanisms that uh you know, this boost has built in that says, you know, if things aren't looking quite right, but if you, in your mind, you know, they're all hooked up right. And for whatever reason, you know, the boost here, it's internal safety mechanisms aren't allowing for essentially you to try and give it a jump start. Uh, you can hit that manual override and that's right there. And that'll allow you to essentially set off the safety, the internal safety mechanisms of the boost and allow you to go ahead and try and start the car. Now, is that recommended? Probably not. 
but it's a nice feature that they include. No, nice to know it's there. Um, hopefully you'll never need it. Um, again, it's got a light on it. So that's pretty bright. I mean, shoot, look at that. Just See there, LA, nice LED light. Um, and again, you can charge your cell phone off it. So it's like a, you know, a lot of people, they'll carry around extra batteries just for just in case for their phones, you know, and maybe in the car or whatever you've got going on. But, you know, with obviously keep this in the car, but this could also serve, you know, so you say you lost total power and you had to, uh, you know, have something at least charge your phone to for emergency type situation. So, again, it's the NOCO Genius Boost. Um, fortunate enough not to have to use it yet. <laughs> Uh, knock on wood um, but it's there if needed and again it takes kind of the place of the old jumper cables that uh, many many of us used for many years which you needed another car <laughs> around too to to get the jump and it knocks that out too which was always a big you know a biggie if you there's not always in a second car around so this is kind of like your second car and your boost and your cables all wrapped into one so highly recommend it I'll link it link it up down below um, we'll try and keep these going with some of the other, the gear that purchased, uh, you know, just to, for safety reasons and, um, uh, recovery reasons, towing reasons, things of that nature. So everybody have a great day. Hey guys, getting ready to pull these off and it should be as simple as hooking the gauges in and I'll show you before and after. I need really to get a tripod. I do have an older GoPro, which I think I'm going to start using. It's way too hard to try and hold it. And I need to probably learn a little bit more about how to position the tripod once I do that. But let me get this in place and I'll be right back. Hey guys, just wanted to show you. Just got it out of the box and it comes with actual plumber's tape which is cool I totally forgot about that part so I'm gonna connect it here and this gauge instead of me waiting you know kind of like a dummy line on cars either something's broken or not but this leads gives you a little more you know like if you put a for a diesel you put a gauge in you could read your exhaust temperature and transmission which you know the new vehicles give you some of that but um you know, you get, you're get you not exactly flying blind, blind when it comes to your propane, which is nice, especially for longer trips. So get this in. Oh, so quick disclaimer, I'm not a plumber. I'm not a, you know, propane guy, whatever it would be called. Um, but you turn these off first, obviously. Um, again, you might want to have some professional do this. Use the tape for sure, but um, yeah, just a couple words of warning gas off first then connect it okay guys so it's on there uh the only difficulty was i had to twist the tank just a tad bit to make sure that this was tight that that sitting it's kind of like your propane uh, tanks at home for your barbecue it twists the same way but check it out now i actually have an indication of what's going on which is awesome Smell a little propane. That's weird. All right, guys. So, got them both on. Um, just make sure they're tight. This one you got to turn up. Kind of turn the whole apparatus up. And that'll make sure everything's tight here. Right here. That's the only thing that's a little kind of weird. It ends up turning the whole gauge. But you can still read it. They're tight, um, but it's nice knowing how much is in there. It shows cool days, dry, hot days, how much. So evidently the propane fluctuates in temperatures. It shows we're good on this one. The other one basically reads the same. So it's nice just knowing um, approximately how much propane you have rather than just kind of guessing by, you know, how much you used or whatever. But uh Leave comments below. A couple projects done today. 
glad to have you guys along please like and subscribe thanks for watching thanks for you know subscribing and um you know being along for the ride here talk to you soon have a great day